Hey guys, and welcome to Curvatex's Super Adobe Dome Calculator version 1.0. I'm so excited to show you this, so I'm just gonna get right into it. I have to first thank Erica Smith, my beautiful cousin, for working so hard at programming this, getting all the bugs out, dealing with my relative technical incompetency and mathematical incompetency, and making this vision happen. I really appreciate it. And also, Marcus Chatto for making the first Excel spreadsheet version of this about five years ago. Uh, so thanks heaps to both of those minds for making this a reality. So the reason that you'll need this is if you wanna build a Super Adobe Dome and you need to figure out how much bag and barbed wire and material you're gonna to need to put in there. And it'll also give you all the dimensions so you can visualize how big your dome's gonna be, especially how tall it's gonna be versus how wide it is. So let's get into it. I'm just chilling on my laptop. It should also work on phones. Um, so jump on. There's a form at the bottom. If there's any bugs, let me know straight away and we'll try and iron them out. All right, so I'm gonna jump into Google Chrome is my browser. Let me know if it works on all your browsers. <clears throat> and great, so first thing you gotta do is go to the website, which is www.curvatexture, C-U-R-V-A-T-E-C-T-U-R-E dot C-O-M. Bloop, 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 bloop. Great. Got a couple tabs, check out our website, see the crazy stuff we do, but what we want is our services tab. Jump in there, go down, we've got consultation and planning, if you'd like us to consult for you. We've got tailored builds and project management, and third down the list is Super Adobe Dome Calculator. Beautiful picture of a little calculator. Learn more, please click on that, and it'll bring you to the intro blurb. I'll just read you through it as quickly as possible. Welcome to Curvatexture's Online Dome Calculator 1.0. Used for estimating the amount of Super Adobe bag, barbed wire, and fill material you'll need to complete your project. It will also help you visualize the size of your dome with a scale figure standing beside your project for reference. The Super Adobe Dome was pioneered and refined at Cal Earth by Nada Khalili and his teams of students and volunteers. It took years to refine this technique and it is part of his amazing legacy left to the world. It follows a very specific set of rules and geometries, which is simple in, in concept, but does take some attention to detail to master in a safe and efficient way. If you'd like to learn, please do inquire and we can point you in the right direction. These calculations are based off both theoretical geometry and exhaustive field experience from us here at Curvatexture and fellow Super Adobe builders from Cal Earth and all over the world. Ian Lodge, and the big Cal Earth Forum, really thank you a lot for all your input while we've been getting this off the ground. Please do keep in mind they are only estimates and we cannot be held responsible for any variations you may find when executing your projects in the real world. Our formulas cannot account for windows or doorways which have too many variables to be able to write in code. We are completely open and excited to help you in any way we can, so once you have exhausted our calculator, please do get in touch to continue the process of creating your dream home or space. Please get in touch with any questions you might have or issues you can find with the programming. This is our first public version, so we foresee a few edits and updates to come over the coming months. So, fine print done. The first thing we look at is structure. The actual physical structure. What are the details of the dome you want to build? First thing you can choose is metric or imperial. You just click in the uh, little circle to move between the two. There's no way I'm working in Imperial. We do metric in Australia, so I'm gonna to stick to that just for this example. If anyone wants to make a video of doing the Imperial version, I would love to see it. So immediately, uh, immediately under that is in inside diameter of the dome. You also have little question marks next to a lot of the things. So if you click on those, it's gonna explain what that is. Inside diameter, after I clicked on the little uh, thing, this is the distance from the inside of one Super Adobe wall across the center point of the dome to the opposite inside wall at the base of the dome. Great, little close, piss that off. Great, that's pretty clear. Two meter dome, that's not terribly long. One meter is from the end of my hand to there. Two meters, can't get a lot of people in there. So let's build one that I've built a lot, which is a 3.6 meter dome which in centimeters is 360 centimeters. So I've punched that in and immediately 
our little drawing with our little person next to it changes and immediately shows us what it's going to look like with a person next to it. Very cool. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. So rows of foundation. Foundation is what goes down into the ground and it's pretty much always suggested that you have at least two rows. One at least, at least one, two is great rows of foundation going down to hold your dome and be able to push all the um, uh, all of the weight of the building easily and safely down into the ground, especially if you live in a seismic region. We don't in Australia, but that's another story. So rows of foundation, you can question mark it again if you want. This is how many rows of super adobe your building will be buried in the ground. For safe building practices, at least two rows should be buried inside a gravel filled trench. If you live in a seismic area, more foundation is needed. Please contact us or your local engineers for more information. It's pretty informative. Um, so I'm going to go with two rows and then rows of buttressing is the next option. What's a buttress? Buttress is anything that lives outside the dome. Uh, uh, any rows that sit outside the dome that either go underground with the foundation or just sit on the ground and hold the dome. Um, anything over about a three meter dome, it's a pretty good idea to um, to have rows of buttressing because the larger they get, the more support they need. So yep, let's do two rows of buttressing. Unfilled bag width is 400 mil. This is the first drop down menu. So you got a drop down menu that starts at 250 mil bags, got 350, 400, 460, 510, 540, 560, 585, 660, and 760 millimeters. The reason you might ask, why are these so weird? Because these are all the sizes that you can get in Australia from a company called Bundy Bag, um, yeah, Bundy Bag, Bag Company. They're up in Bundaberg in Queensland and uh, that's the place that I've always gotten my bags from. But if you're in a region that has different size bags, just try and find the one that's uh, as close in measurement to it. We're gonna have the feature where you can put your own one in soon, but it's just not here yet. So let's go, go with the 350 mil bags. Barbed wire rounds, another circle, you can uh, just click that. Super Adobe domes need to have barbed wire laced in between each row to give it tensile strength and also to help the bags not fall in on each other. So um, let's go with one row of barbed wire. And then there's three, uh, three bits of information that we get told once we've filled in this first section, which is structure. The first one is the wall width, which is 29.50 centimeters. The next one is layer height. It's 11 centimeters. The next one is floor area, which is 10.18 meters squared. Uh, floor area, pretty self-explanatory. How big is my floor going to be? It's going to be a circle uh, to start off with. And that circle is going to have the area of 10.18 square meters. So when you think of a house and you think about its square meterage, that's what they're talking about. So the layer height, what's that? That is how tall each layer is going to be. That does vary uh, depending on how much you tamp the bags and how much you fill them. But this is a general average height that I've experienced from a normal averagely tamped bag. Each layer height is going to be 11 centimeters and the wall width is going to be 29.50. This wall width is probably the most important to do with this calculator. I'm going to tell you why. This looks great. Our person there, this looks like a wonderfully sized dome. I'd like to live in there. This little stick figure wants to live in there. So, hey, what's the issue here? Looks like we have two little red triangles, which have an exclamation mark in them. So something's going on. What do they say? The first one says, your wall width must not fall below 10% of the inside diameter of the dome. I'll do that again. Your wall width must not fall below 10% of the inside diameter of the dome. Realistically, a builder can only lay a bag which is 500 to 600 mil wide max, if experienced and strong enough which leaves the maximum internal diameter of the dome to be about six meters wide. This 10% rule is great to follow, but it can in cert certain circumstances be pushed to 8% if working with experienced builders and using adequately stabilized bags with cement or lime and properly left to dry before building further. Please get in touch for more info regarding these limits. So that thing was talking about this number here, which is calculated for us, 
based off what we punch into the unfilled bag drop down menu. All based, all referencing the inside diameter first um, measurement. So I know that I want it to be 360 centimeters, my internal diameter. So I've got to change the unfilled bag width. I've got to make it a larger bag because it's telling me my bags are too small. So let's go up to the 460 millimeters. It's now changed the uh, wall width to 39.5 centimeters, which both in my head, but also uh, the program is telling me because that warning's gone away, it means that that wall width is an adequate size um, of bag to be able to use with the 360 centimeter, <clears throat> um, 360 centimeter internal diameter. So I won't go into that any further. I'll probably do a longer video later. So barbed wire rounds. Uh, there's a second little triangle. What does this say? And it says structures taller than three meters require two rounds of barbed wire. So a round is like a layer on top of the bag. You can have either um, one row of barbed wire or you can have two rows of barbed wire. You could have three, but it's not necessary. Two is a lot more safe and a lot stronger, both seismically, so the building will be stronger, but while you're building it, it's also a lot, um, a lot better. It's always better to have two rows of barbed wire so the bags don't wanna fall in, especially when you get into the top third building of the dome. So, it's telling me that we require two rows of barbed wire. It's an easy fix. We can just click on that. Done. All the triangles have gone away. We've got a lovely looking person. There's no warnings. So it's saying, hey, this is looking like a great little dome to build. Let's do it. So structure summary. The internal dome height is 338 centimeters tall from the ground to the inside peak of your dome. That's really handy to know because 3.38 uh, centimeters, I'm 190 centimeters tall. Um, so that's heaps of space if I'm standing in the middle between the top of my head and the top of the wall. You can also reference the picture. This person is about 170 centimeters tall, I believe. Um, and you can fit probably almost two people standing on top of each other in the middle of your dome. Also shows you how close you can visualize with the little stick figure, how close you'll be able to walk to the middle of the walls before you start bumping your head on the side of the dome. So that's cool too. Internal dome height, uh, the next one is total bag length is 399.31 meters. So let's round it up and call it 400 meters of bag length that you'll need for this. Now this calculation is also adding one meter extra. So you have 500 mil at the start of the bag and 500 mil at the end of the bag for your building. So this is designed to be built with. Uh, it doesn't include windows and doesn't include doors or any other interesting things you wanna do with the bag. You need to calculate that yourself. It's too hard for our program to do it at this point in time. Um, but it does give you that extra um, extra amount. So it's always good to have more anyway. So feel free to add on to that amount if you like. So the total barbed wire length is 680.79 meters that we need to order. And waterproof membrane, which I haven't mentioned yet, is 17.77 meters by 3.15 meters. The waterproof membrane is this little black square that's going around the first layer out of the ground and then all of the layers below the ground. Um, that's what that is. Uh, and you need to do that so you don't get moisture wicking out uh, through the ground and through the trench that they're sitting in and up your building and also up your plaster. So it's really important. So it's telling us that we need a membrane that's 3.15 meters wide and 17.77 meters long. That gives a little bit of overlap as well so that they can join um, and then wrap everything up. But if you have a different idea of how to do that, then just go with what you've done in the past. That's a little bit of an extra feature that um, is a little bit advanced. So feel free to do whatever you need to. The next section is really cool. It's the fill section. And that means uh, we get to tell the program what we're gonna be putting in the bags. So at the moment, it just gives one for everything. And we've got this lovely little pie chart as well, which gives us even one, it's all in parts, it's not in percentages. If you wanted to just turn it into percentages, you could do a hundred parts and then fill in all of your whole percent percentages in that way. So that's relatively easy to do. 
But we say parts because in Super Adobe building, we often use shovels as a part or maybe buckets as a part. So um, that's why we've chosen to do parts instead of percentages. Um, so I'm just going to make one up. I'm going to say we're going to need five parts site soil. Uh, let's imagine the site soil has a little bit too much clay in it. So I'm going to buy some sand to chuck in there as well. We'll do three parts sand. Um, site soil already has clay in it. So I'll do zero clay that we're going to be adding. Uh, lime, I'll leave at uh, 1%. Uh, lime, let's go down to 0.5%. Sorry, 0.5 of a part, so half a part. And uh, cement, not going to chuck any cement in there. Lime is going to be our stabilizer. Gravel, yeah, let's do two parts gravel and then zero other. So the other is there if you have something else you want to be chucking in, like recycled bottles or as in like smashed up glass or um, scoria, uh, which is, has really great insula insulative properties. Anything else you might want to chuck in there, you can put in the other and, uh, and that's what it'll be. So here we got five parts site soil, three parts sand, no clay, 0.5 of a part of lime, no cement, two gravel and no other. And our pie chart is beautifully um, rebuilding itself to show us exactly those. So now the fill summary, this is really cool and really clear to me. Hope it is to you. So the total fill required is 18.5 cubic meters. That's great to know if you are cutting, uh, if you're digging a pond or digging a pool or something like that and the amount of material that you pull out, you need to be able to look at it and say, is that gonna be enough to actually fit inside the bags to build the dome? And if you're using an excavator, you can say, hey, there's two cubic meters per excavator bucket. You just need to count the amount of buckets that you use and that's how much you'll have. So um, total fill required for this dome, 3.6 meter dome is 18.5 cubic meters squared, cubed, cubic meters squared. <laughs> and uh, it then goes down to break down the parts that we just filled in up above. Uh, so it goes soil, which is site soil, sand, clay, lime, cement, gravel, and other. So here, based off our parts that we previously put in, it's given us how much of everything we need. So the total is 18.5, but the breakdown is 18.81 of site soil, 5.29 of sand, none of clay, because we don't want to add any of that, 0 0.88 of lime, uh, which is just a bit under a cubic meter, uh, so it'd be a little bit less than a pallet worth, um, no cement, 3.52 cubic meters of gravel and no, no other added. So you can then take that, look at it and ring up your local uh, sand or uh, soil supply place and say, hey, I'd like 3.52 meters of gravel. Let's round it up to four. I want four meters of gravel. I'd like says 5.29 but let's say I want six uh, cubes of sand and hey do you sell lime as well oh that's great can I get whatever 0.88 of a cubic meter is in lime and they'll tell you how much is in one bag and then they'll sell you that amount of bags so that's really cool I love how simple and clear that is and basic that is uh, for something that's a pretty pretty difficult thing so that's about it that's the very first very basic intro I want you guys to get on it start playing with it and uh, show me any issues, show me what you can do and uh, let me know all your feedback. I'd really, really love to hear, hear it. There's also a detailed report, but I'm not gonna go into that now. I'll go into that in another video. So please have a play, let me know what you think. Thanks heaps. Thank you again, Erica Smith, for your amazing work. And uh, I'm incredibly proud of what we've done and I really hope that it helps people out there build Super Adobe domes. Thanks heaps, guys. Bye-bye.